If you're struggling to get views on YouTube, the strategy in this video could change everything. For example, I was able to take this video to over 130,000 views, even though my channel only had 51 subscribers when I first posted it. And it's all thanks to this YouTube SEO strategy I'm gonna show you in this video and it works even if you have a really small channel or even if you're in a very competitive niche. I've used this strategy on dozens of videos including this video right here which got over 260,000 views. If we put in how to grow a YouTube channel from zero subscribers, Guess whose video comes up first? YouTube Shorts Hacks, another one of my videos come up first. And not to brag, but I have so many more videos exactly like this. And what you'll notice as well, which is interesting, is that if you have a look at my competitors and their subscriber counts here for this exact same search term, all of them are significantly larger than me, and yet I'm still number one. But the commonality between all of these videos I've just shown you is that they're getting the majority of their views through YouTube search. In other words, people are coming to YouTube, typing in things like gaming tags for YouTube, my video shows up number one, and they click on that. So how can you do this and get hundreds of thousands of views even if you're a small channel in a very competitive niche? The first step is to really get good at keyword research, which I'm gonna show you exactly how to do right now. And we're gonna start getting good at keyword research by avoiding the mistake that almost everyone makes. And that is they go out there, they create a video, and then once they create their video, they go, oh, I should maybe try and find some keywords for this video. And they go out there, they try and find some keywords, they chuck them in the title and description, maybe the tag section, and then they wonder why their video doesn't rank top of the search results. What you wanna do instead is you wanna start at the very beginning before you even make the YouTube video doing your keyword research. Then you wanna reverse engineer high search terms. So a lot of people are looking for that particular video, yet low competition, i.e. there aren't a huge amount of big YouTubers creating videos targeting that search term. And then when you find keywords where that balance is in your favor, like I'm gonna show you in a second, that's when you reverse engineer those keywords and create a video around the keywords, which ultimately, when you do the things we're gonna talk about in this video, will result in you being able to rank number one and get a ton of views because we all like views. And so we're gonna start out by using a tool to actually research the market before we even talk about creating a video. And so the first step of this strategy is to pick a good keyword research tool. Now that might sound boring and obvious and like it doesn't actually matter, but do not skip this step because again, this is another huge pitfall so many small YouTubers suffer from. Most keyword research tools out there don't work very well. And so you're getting crappy data, crappy information, which leads to you having crappy keywords and crappy videos that don't rank. For example, let's take this keyword right here, gaming tags for YouTube. And a lot of YouTubers who think they're pretty savvy when they're doing their keyword research, they use YouTube's new keyword research tool. Now let's put in our search term here, gaming tags for YouTube. And you'll see if I hit enter on this, it actually says it looks like there aren't many search results for this term, which is crazy because I've created this video. I know the analytics for this video. I know for a fact that this search term is getting searches. Another popular keyword tool is the keyword planner. Now it's saying there is some volume here. So at least it's not lying to us completely, but it's so broad. It's like between a hundred and a thousand average monthly searches. Here's another more advanced keyword research tool. Chew buddy, here it's a bit better. It gives us a more accurate estimate. It says around about about a thousand views per month, but they're probably just rounding. Another one, keywordtool.io. We actually don't even need to do accurate research here because if you come into Tube Buddy, little secret when you hover over this is it will tell you that their data actually runs off keywordtool.io, so they're basically the same thing. Here's another tool, Uber Suggest. Search volume, it says it's 30 per month. So you can see I'm using some tools here. They're saying there's not even enough traction to show any data. Some are saying, oh, it's around a thousand. Some are saying, oh, it's only 30. Other tools are saying, well, there's some but I'm not sure if it's a hundred or a thousand. See, it's all over the place. And that's why I personally now gravitate towards vidIQ because if I come to vidIQ's keyword tool, type in gaming tags for YouTube, what you can see is that it actually gives me a specific number. It says for gaming tags on YouTube, the search volume is 1,337. And in general, I think vidIQ's tool is the more accurate out of all of these. Now you might be wondering if vidIQ is so much better, why doesn't everyone just use it? And the reason for that is you get what you pay for. But recently they did reach out to me and I gave them permission to create an exclusive page just for you, my subscribers, 
on their site where you can get vidIQ for just $1 for your first month. It's a pretty wild discount. When you do that, you'll be supporting this channel as well. So with that out of the way, let's actually move on now to doing some proper keyword research. Now, there are actually two ways to start out here. The first way is to basically go to YouTube, find one of your competitors. I'm gonna say like Alan Spicer, he's another YouTuber who does videos about YouTube. Gonna click on his channel, go to videos, and then we're gonna search by most popular. And what you wanna do is find popular videos from your competitors that are searchable videos. What do I mean by this? Well, for example, if we come to my channel, let's take a look at this video here. It says, small channels do this to make the algorithm love you. Now think about that title. No one's going to YouTube and typing in small channels do this to make the algorithm love you. This particular strategy we're talking about right now, we're gonna try and rank our videos high in YouTube search. So this would not be a good video for us to look at. On the other hand, if I come to Alan's channel here, things like how to download a YouTube video, how to turn on and off restricted mode, how to delete a YouTube channel, these are all search terms people would actually enter into YouTube and then Alan's video might come up. Anyway, you can find some of the most searchable videos and then basically enter the main keyword or keyword phrase from that video into your keyword research tool. So if I was to take this video, for example, how to download a YouTube video, the fast and free bit doesn't really matter. Um, so I would come to my keyword research tool and I'd type in how to download a YouTube video and hit search on that. And this is what I call your root keyword. This is the keyword that you enter that allows you to then start really digging into other keywords and related keywords and really find the goal. And I'll show you more about that in a minute. But first, I wanna give you an alternative to what I just talked about, which this is one way to find your root keyword. Word, but some of you might not have really many competitors to model. And so if that's you, what I want you to do instead is enter a very broad and vague keyword that relates to the types of videos you create. So in my case, it might be YouTube because I create YouTube tutorials. So now obviously YouTube is a terrible keyword for me to try and rank for, but what it does is it gets me started and it gets me some data that I can start digging through. So either way, whether you're using a competitor's video to as your root keyword or just using a very general term related to your niche as your root keyword to get you started, the next steps are all the same. In this case, I'm just gonna continue with using this general keyword since it's already here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna come across to this tab here, which is matching terms. This is gonna give you a list of keywords that have your root keyword in them. And then what I want you to do is I want you to come across to this overall button. This is basically a score that vidIQ tries to provide you to measure how likely it is that you can create a video around this keyword as a small YouTuber and get views. It's not perfect, I'll get into that in a moment, but it's a rough way to sort of narrow down the data a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on it and it's gonna order these videos by the highest overall score to the lowest score. And now I'm gonna go through these keywords here. I'm gonna look for ideas of videos that I could be creating. So if I scroll through here, an interesting term that stands out to me is YouTube advanced not working. What we can see is this gets quite a high search volume, right? So over 200,000 people, the competition score is quite low. Again, take competition scores with a grain of salt because often they're wrong. And I'll talk more about how to manually vet competition in a second. But what I'll do then is I'll grab this, I'll click on it, I'll click copy keyword, and then I'll come across to YouTube and I'll just enter that keyword into YouTube and see what comes up. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna manually get an idea of how much competition this keyword has. And we're gonna look at two things. Firstly, we're gonna have a look at how large the channels posting videos around this topic actually are, because that's gonna give us an idea of how hard it would be for us as a small YouTuber to break into this search results page. And we're also gonna look at the volume of videos. Now to start off with, if you have vidIQ installed, you get this little um, kind of pop up here, which will tell you how many subscribers as a channel has without actually having to click on it, which makes things convenient. And this actually looks like it could be a really interesting search term for us because what you can see is the number one video ranking here has almost 300,000 views. It was posted one month ago and it was by a creator that only has 1,000 subscribers. The video below that, 600,000 views one month ago, posted by a video a creator with only 2,000 subscribers. Another one three weeks ago, 50,000 views, posted by a creator with 7,000 subscribers. Now, from that standpoint, this looks like a very lucrative keyword. It's clear that a lot of small creators are ranking high for this. The thing that concerns me here with this keyword is if we scroll down, have a look, it looks like we might have been a little bit too late with this one. There are already one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like 
There are already a ton of small creators who have already jumped on this within the last month and created videos about it. And so unless we look at their videos and are like, hey, we can create videos that are way better than these, I think this one might be a tricky one for us to break into because it looks like we just missed the boat. But that's okay. Let's go back to our list and let's try another one. So if I go to another one here, something that stands out is YouTube Shorts thumbnail. Maybe I could create a video like how to change a YouTube Shorts thumbnail. We're going to click on YouTube Shorts thumbnail, copy that keyword, do the exact same thing. We're going to do a manual competition research because I don't trust the vidIQ's competition stats. And what you can see here, really interesting as well. The videos that's showing up don't have a huge amount of views and there is one creator who's a small creator who's showing up as in a second position, which is pretty good. But what I can see is that there are a bunch of larger creators who are making videos on this. Think Media here three weeks ago, 2.5 million subscribers. Robert Benjamin, 550,000 subscribers. VidIQ, 1.5 million subscribers. So while this one doesn't have as huge a volume of videos showing up for it, it does seem like there are a lot of larger creators already creating videos on this. And chances are, because they're larger and they have so much more experience on me and an existing audience, they're gonna have an advantage over me. Their content's probably gonna be pretty good and it's gonna be hard for me, assuming I'm a small creator who's kind of just getting into this, to break into this search results page. Again, assuming I don't have something really special to bring to the table. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna continue doing my research. And so let's scroll down a little bit further, YouTube keyword research, there we go. <laughs> Should be funny, I could do like an inception. I could keyword research a YouTube keyword research video. Uh, but no, I like this. This one's interesting to me. So 100,000 search volume, low competition, pretty decent score here. How to upload shorts from PC. Let's copy that keyword and let's take a look at that. Now this is looking a bit better here. There aren't a huge amount of videos. Look, there's one, two, three. Yeah, it's pretty much only three like that are recent. This one's not recent at all. It's pretty much only three that are showing up. Out of those three, two of them have over 100,000 views. This one's almost got 500,000 views. And those creators only have a thousand subscribers or so. And I can almost guarantee that most of this dude's subscribers have come from this video. If I was a more established channel, I reckon I could make a video on this exact search term and it would probably do well. However, for example, let's say I'm a complete beginner and I want the best chances of getting some views. I'm happy to sacrifice the chance of getting a huge amount of views for a higher likelihood that I'm going to get a significant amount of views. And so what I might do here, for example, and this is where you can get a bit creative, is I might change out a variable here. So I might change this instead of how to upload shorts from PC, what if I change this to how to upload shorts from Mac? And now this is actually looking pretty good for me because most of these videos that are showing up, one, they're pretty small careers. Check out this one, only 500,000 careers and he's showing up as the third search result. And also in these guys' titles, they're not specifically for Mac. They're saying for PC or Mac. So if I'm coming into this and I'm just a Mac user, I'm typing how to upload shorts for Mac. In my head, I'm repeating, I want to know how to upload YouTube shorts for Mac. I'm going to be more likely probably to click on a video that is specifically for Mac users as opposed to a video that's like for PC or Mac, because I'm just going to assume that the strictly for Mac version is probably going to be more catered to my needs. So let's copy this search term. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually click on this search term here. That's going to enter it as our main keyword now. And it's going to give us, we're going to get some calculations on this. So vidIQ is going to give us a competition score. So it reckons that the how to upload uh, shorts from PC is pretty good. 100,000 search volume. Competition it reckons is low. Now let's change this from PC to Mac. See what we get. Now this is, this is an interesting example here of how the competition score can be wrong and lie. So you can see here it says that there's a higher competition for Mac, which you know we just did our manual research and we can see that there is not, that's not the case, it's actually the opposite. But what I am interested in seeing here is I can see that this search term has 1,200 searches per month. Now relative to 100,000 searches, it doesn't sound that exciting, but as a small creator, getting 1,200 views per month, that's pretty damn good on one video. And so for me, to be honest, if I was a like really small creator just getting started, I would probably be more likely to choose this keyword to create a video around because I think even though the search volume is less, the chances of me actually standing out are probably the highest with this search term. So for the remainder of this tutorial, I'm going to run with this search term. And now in my head, I know that I'm going to be creating how to upload YouTube shorts tutorial for Mac users. Now, what I sometimes like to do is I like to come across now, I've entered into YouTube, I can see what my competitors 
YouTubers are doing for their videos and thumbnails. I want to look at their titles and thumbnails and see is there anything here that I could potentially use to stand out. Now you don't always want to take inspiration from the thumbnails of videos that are already showing up here because one, you want to stand out and two, because we're going for much smaller and more niche search terms, often your competition who show up here actually don't have very good thumbnails. So you should ignore their thumbnails and just create your own one. That's going to be a lot better. I'll talk more about how to create great custom thumbnails later in the video. But either way, I would always come here, just take a squiz at what's going on, just in case there's something that I could be inspired by or certain patterns I might notice or pick up. For example, one real quick pattern I've just noticed, out of all of the videos here, they pretty much all have the YouTube Shorts logo in them. Notice that, um, except for this one video here and out of all of the videos, this one's done the worst. So what I pick up here is when I go to create my thumbnail for my how to upload YouTube shorts on Mac video, I wanna make sure I use the YouTube shorts logo in it because it seems like that's worked well for a lot of the others here. The other thing I'll look at is look at the length of the videos you're competing against. So normally you want your video to be a similar length, roughly within 20% either way of the length of their videos. So in this case, I'd be looking to make my video somewhere between three and four four minutes it looks like based on the tutorials that are out here. Now there are two things you can try. One is you can sometimes try and make the video a little bit longer and that can sometimes give you a watch time advantage because if viewers on your video watch your video all the way to the end versus viewers of other shorter videos who watch their videos all the way to the end, your video is going to be getting more watch time per viewer because your video is longer and there's more video to watch. However, that can sometimes backfire because sometimes people don't want to watch a longer video, they want to watch a shorter video. For example, in the case of a tutorial here, being shorter and getting to the point sooner is probably something viewers would appreciate and so therefore they might be more likely to click on a shorter video and so a shorter video might end up with a higher click-through rate which boosts your performance and makes you rank higher on the search results page. So if you want to get more advanced, you can try and think about those two things and then using the context of your specific scenario, decide whether or not you want to try and get a watch time advantage on your competitors or whether or not you want to try and go shorter and get a higher click-through rate. But if all that sounds really nerdy and complicated, just look at what your competitors are doing and then make your video somewhere plus or minus 20% of the average video duration here. So again, in this case, looks like it'd be around three to four minutes. Now, I've just sat here for 10 minutes doing this and I found this search term. Ideally, I would be spending hours looking for video ideas, trying to find the ones that are going to be most likely to succeed based on the criteria I've mentioned previously previously in this video. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's just continue on. And now that we've got a video idea where there is some proven data showing us like, hey, this could be a good thing to create. Let me show you exactly how to optimize this video so you're highly likely to shop high on the search results. So again, you're gonna come to your keyword research tool, make sure you've got your keyword inputted here. And then we're gonna come across to matching terms. And something I wanna highlight that's really important, a mistake a lot of people make here, is that when they're adding keywords into their description and their title and their tag section, they feel Feel like they have to include like a wide variety of tags to try and spread the net as wide as possible to maximize their chances of getting views. You actually want to do the opposite as you can see here. I'm not going into related keywords. I'm going into matching terms. I want to be hyper specific and targeted on this one keyword. And when I am adding additional keywords, they're all just variations of my main keyword. Now, the first step of this optimization process is to come up with a title for your YouTube video. Now, some keywords might make great video titles on their own. For example, how to upload your YouTube shorts from Mac. I think that could work as a title on its own, full stop. But sometimes you can massage these titles a little bit. You always wanna have your keyword in your title, that is critical, but you can add extra things around your keyword to make your video more clickable. Now you can do this manually and just brainstorm, but I'm pretty lazy. So something I like to do is when you're logged into vidIQ, if you come across on this dashboard, you'll see up here, there's a tool called AI Coach. It's essentially like chat GPT, except specifically designed for YouTubers. And when you're in here, you wanna come across to the advanced section, because what it's gonna do when you create a vidIQ account, it's gonna ask you to connect your channel. And and now when you come to this tab and then go to advanced channel data, when you ask this AI coach a question, and it's gonna give you an answer bearing in mind the context of your specific YouTube channel. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna use the following prompt to flesh out some title ideas for my specific keyword. So I'm just copied that in there. And then right here after the two, I'm going to paste my specific keyword. 
going to hit send. What you're going to see is it's going to think about the question. And the second step it's going to do is it's actually going to look at my YouTube channel data and it's going to adjust its question and answer based on the data from my actual YouTube channel. And I tend to like to tell it to write 10 or 20 or 30 YouTube title ideas. And then I just scroll through all of them and pick out the ones that jump out to me. Because if they jump out to me, then chances are they might jump out to viewers as well. <laughs> See, and so here we have our list and it's actually given us some love hearts and exosos. <laughs> So we have our list here and out of these tile ideas, I could generate another 10 or 20 and I might actually do that. But really right off the bat, the one that actually stands out to me is how to upload YouTube shorts on Mac, easy and efficient methods. The reason it stands out to me is remember when we were doing our research earlier, the most popular one of these videos actually is how to upload YouTube shorts from PC, so easy. It uses the keyword easy. I think I just sneezed out three brain cells. And so learning the easy way to upload shorts from Mac seems to be something that viewers appreciate. So what I'm gonna do, I might adjust it, potentially I might remove the and efficient and just change it to easy method. But overall, I like that one. It has that keyword phrase in it and it has a little value add that might make it more likely that people will click on our video compared to someone else's video. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our second prompt and again, you want to copy and paste it exactly like I've got here. And what you're going to do is you're going to update this little marker here to match the video that's on the list above. So in my case, um, hashtag five, well, it actually is already at hashtag five, but let's say my, my favorite tile idea was like number nine. I would update this to be like, hey, write me based on title nine. But again, this one's five, so I'm gonna put that at five. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to my keyword research tool. Again, I've got my uh, main keyword here that's gonna be my video in this keyword research tool. I've come across to matching terms. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this search volume counter to sort by the most search for terms for this particular term. And then from here, you're gonna to wanna to pick three to five depending on how natural it sounds. And I'll, I'll explain more about what I mean by that in a second. Keywords that you can feature in your description. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy, let's just say these top three here, cause they're highly related. How to upload shorts from PC, laptop, Mac. How to upload shorts from PC and Mac 2022. How to upload shorts from Mac. I'm gonna copy these. We're going to copy down here. I'm going to come across to chat GPT and using this prompt, I'm going to paste these keywords right here. Ignore my accidental enter press up there. And what this is going to do is it's going to write a YouTube description for me. Very important in natural language, because if you just keyword stuff in your description, YouTube, will, it's against YouTube's terms of service and they can actually delete your channel. And then we're going to hit enter. It's going to think about our question. It's going to look again across our channel data. A few inches later. And what you can see is it's actually written a YouTube description here that looks like it's kind of catered to a human, even though it is pretty keyword heavy. And it's included those phrases that we told to include. So for example, it's got how to upload shorts on Mac. It's got uploading YouTube shorts from Mac, PC, or laptop. It's talked about the 2022 methods for uploading YouTube shorts. You know, I might manually make this a little bit shorter because it's a little bit lengthy. There's a bit of repeated stuff, but overall you can see the AI coach has written a pretty good description, which is gonna help my video rank much higher in search because your description, the keyword description is actually more important than your tag section, which is ironic because your tag section is supposed to be where you input keywords and all that kind of thing. So yeah, whatever YouTube. So now what I do from here is I grab my title that I want to use, which is in this case, this one. Uh, I chuck that into my title here. And like I said, I might actually adjust this. I might actually get rid of the end efficient, easy method works well for me. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my description. I think I'm just going to grab this first bit. I don't actually need the last bit and it's not really that useful. Um, so let's chuck that in here. And then the last step is just to add some YouTube tags. And essentially we're gonna come across back to our keyword research tool. We're gonna to stay in that same matching terms list. And we're gonna grab a bunch of matching terms here and chuck them into our tag section. I'm gonna copy these eight. I'm gonna come across to my video. I'm gonna scroll down. And in the very bottom, you wanna add a tag that is just your channel name. So your channel shows up when you search for it. Um, you're also gonna to wanna to add your YouTube title 
in there as your as a tag and then you're just going to copy and paste in all those tags you literally just copied from vidIQ and I'm going to just grab a couple more here because I didn't uh, it seems like I ran out and you'll notice with tags I'm not really doing a whole lot of research into this because tags actually aren't that important but it's kind of like they're still here so YouTube must use them to some degree I suspect YouTube uses them a little bit more for smaller channels probably not at all for larger channels anyway and I'm just going to trim off any of the tags that don't fit until here we are so now I've got a full tag section everything fits and so from here we're pretty much good to go you can just check off all the other standard boxes you know thumbnail end screen that kind of thing but before you hit publish on your video I want you to promise me something look at the beginning of this video I showed you a bunch of examples that prove this method works but as with every method on YouTube, there isn't a guaranteed 100 success rate. And anyone who tells you that there is a YouTube strategy that 100% guarantees success 100% of the time, they're lying to you essentially. Not every video is gonna get hundreds of thousands of views, but my promise to you is that if you do this consistently, eventually you'll stumble upon the ones that do well. It might be your fifth video, it might be your sixth video, it might be your 10th video, but trust me, when that 10th video really does hit, and you start consistently getting tens or maybe even hundreds of thousands of views, it'll make up for the 10 videos that flopped before it. So get out there and remember if you do wanna get the vidIQ tool I used in this video for your keyword research, also for the AI coach and a whole bunch of other tools, you can use the link in the description to get it 98% off, so for just $1. Oh, and as promised, if you need help with custom thumbnails for your videos, I'll link a video right on screen that is specifically about creating thumbnails for your videos. So if that's something you have trouble with, Watch that video now.